Previously on Two Up and Overloaded. As we headed along the coast of East Malaysia, our rented KTM 250 Adventure got a salty taste of the ocean. evening in the resort city of Miri. Miri is on the border with a country that I had wanted to go to for a very, very long time. A tiny little country called Brunei. To me, it was like a mythical, it's like where Aladdin was from. He's like, yes, I am the <laughs> Sultan of Brunei. You know, like, okay, sure you are, buddy. You know, where is yeah. it on a map? I can't find it on a map. <laughs> I, I assure you, it exists. It has for 600 years. Very rich. <laughs> very rich. There is Prince Ali. <laughs> yeah, we were now knocking on the door of this amazing place. I was so excited. And I don't know if it said Brunei or Brunei. I've looked it up. It seems to be Brunei in English, but the local people here do say Brunei, and that's what it's spelled like. So forgive us. <laughs> We're saying us. it wrong if we are. Brunei is a tiny, oil-rich Islamic nation ruled by an absolute monarch, the Sultan Hassanal Bolkaya. He is one of the richest men in the world and is said to live in a glittering golden palace that was built to show off his incredible wealth. So of course, we had to check out this mysterious and exciting country. And we would be going into Brunei the next day. We were so excited. So the next morning we woke up, we had some power snacks, or at least Marissa did. I don't eat breakfast because it makes me tired again. <laughs> <laughs> Rambutan could never make you tired. Yeah, though. orangutan, yes. <laughs> hey everyone, good morning. We are about to cross into Brunei today. I couldn't be more excited. It's a tiny country that I heard about long ago while I was just looking at an atlas. That's how long ago I was looking at an atlas. <laughs> and I was like, what is this strange little country there? But first, I'm going to have my favorite breakfast. Actually, this is my favorite fruit in the whole wide world, my new favorite fruit. And it is called rambutan. If you just dig in your nail and pull it apart, it's white inside. And then inside of the white part is a giant pit. So I think they're related to lychee, but it, it's so much better. I absolutely love rambutan. So if you ever come to the tropics or this part of the world, see if you can find them. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and guess what? It was still raining. Yes. Yeah. Weather forecast looks like 100% chance of rain all day long everywhere. So we are preparing like we did yesterday with, I know this sounds crazy, but just the rain pants because that I feel like is better because then the rain doesn't go into the boots and you're dry in your pants, but the top part, it's like you sweat. And then when the rain stops, you get that wind and then you dry off on the top. So, and you still stay cool while you're in your rain gear. So a little weird, but that's what we've been experimenting with. I had this brilliant idea that I wasn't going to wear my rain jacket. My rain jacket is this awesome climb rain jacket that works perfectly well. But in my head, I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna wear my mesh outer jacket because I have Tim right in front of me on the motorcycle. Human shield. We're going at speed. It's a zillion degrees out, even with the rain. It's super hot and humid out, and I'm sweating under there anyway. I'm not gonna get that much more wet no. than just the regular sweat of the day. Normally when we are preparing our rain gear and our whole rain setup, the object is to stay completely dry so that we don't get cold and wet because that can be so dangerous in colder climates. But here it's like, yeah. No, like, like we're gonna be wet from sweat anyway, so like it doesn't matter and it's so hot. 
And to be fair, usually when it rains, it's like in pockets, right? Yeah. And so by the time you're soaked, then the sun comes out and you dry up within half an hour. And it's yeah. like nothing ever happened. This KTM, <laughs> it's windshield was like, you know, I couldn't even put one of our stickers on it because it, it wasn't big enough. It was just this small little thing. <laughs> so I had geared up in, yeah. my, in my climb rain gear because I don't have any resistance to the, to the weather. It's still raining though, but uh, I think we should be good. The border shouldn't be too far. And, oh, thank you. I'm really excited. We're going to be going to Bruda. Or Brunei, one of those two is the right name. Yay! Now I was wearing my rain pants because I didn't want my boots to fill up with water and I didn't want to be sitting in a in my soggy bottom. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> I don't think that came out right. I know, but you got yourself and I liked it, they liked it, we all liked it. But as we got on the motorcycle and the rain started to bucket down on me without my rain jacket, I began to wonder if I was going to majorly regret my decision. Hey everyone, nice to have you here. We are Tim and Marissa No Tear. I ride in the front and I'm in the rear. We travel the world and we pack too much gear. Oh, all the places, places we'll, we'll go. go. Through rain and through sleet and through mud and through snow. Oh, all the, the things, things we'll see. see. We've been to a country or two or three. Oh, all the, the fun, fun we've, we've had. had. You have you along would make us real glad. So give us a like and, and hit subscribe to join us along our epic ride. So pretty quickly we got to the border with Brunei. Yay, 27th country. 28! Woo! Yay! <laughs> so because Brunei has a very weird shape, if you are going to pass through the two different lobes of Brunei, as we were planning on doing, not all in one day, but we were planning on doing it, that is eight immigration checkpoints yeah. that you have to go through. Because you enter, you, you exit East Malaysia, you enter Brunei, mm -hmm. and then you exit Brunei, enter East Malaysia, mm -hmm. and then you exit East Malaysia, which is just a splinter on the map. <laughs> the, you know, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Yes. Like me saying ridiculous. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and each time you get 90 days on your visa, which is great. I mean, you yeah. can just go between borders forever. Okay, we've officially left Malaysia. And now we're going to head to Brunei, where I think the more complicated stuff is going to begin. Here we go. At the borders, the rain was still coming down, but I was actually just fine. I mean, we've been going at pretty good speeds on the highway and you were my human shield, and so I wasn't too wet. So a nice thing about Brunei, uh, they're oil rich, right? Uh, so they don't need the palm oil. They're standard oil rich, <laughs> I don't know, black goopy oil rich. <laughs> So they have a lot of their natural uh, rainforest left, yeah. which is really nice. And so when, as soon as we entered, some of you know, the, the palm oil trees had disappeared and the thick jungle reappeared. And with thick jungle comes monkeys. So we saw monkeys right off the bat. Yeah, right on the side of the road, just hanging out there. A troop of monkeys. Yeah, it was amazing. So cool. It was a good welcoming into this, this new country. It was just, it was the Abu and his friends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously there are monkeys uh, in Agrabah. They got the monkeys. <laughs> they got the monkeys. 
But with the troops of monkeys, they also had just, it was just raining and raining and raining. Yes. We headed into Brunei's biggest city, called Bandar Seri Begawan. to go to the palace and I did again I had like this image of you know the golden roofed uh, Sultan building I'm gonna go with the the Taj Mahal type thing but with a gold roof yes but we did see a building like that oh, and that did. is the mosque which is right next to the palace of the Sultan But unfortunately, the Sultan's Palace does not have tours for the public, but we were able to go right up to the front gates. Yeah, the Golden Gates, and there was a nice bed of flowers, and there was a nice sign that said this is the residence of a very wealthy man, and there were guards, and behind the fence was another, were two more guard shacks with two more beef eater looking dudes in them, uh, the, you know, another round of patrol. So yes. very high security. I did ask the, the, the security guard by the front gate if I can take pictures because the last thing I wanted to do right. was end up in some weird jail because I was taking pictures because yes. I was a spy. Here's the guy right here. Can we just take a picture? We can take a picture. Uh, Brunei is a very conservative country and um, it does have very strict laws and so you do have to be careful with things like that. This is true. But, but he, he had a said, cat. He had a cat in there pictures. too. He was, he was just this guard hanging out with a cat and I was like, he's cool. So we took pictures. It was nice. It looks oh. like they've been eating purple fruit. Oh. oh. It's Brunei. <laughs> Oh, we gotta check the trunk. Wow. The Guinness Book of World Records says that this palace, Istana Nur Aliman, is the world's largest residential palace. It covers 200,000 meters square, contains 1,788 rooms, has 257 bathrooms, a banqueting hall for 5,000 guests, a garage for 110 cars, an air-conditioned stable for 200 ponies and five swimming pools. And a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> I love the air-conditioned stables. <laughs> That's the best. No. <laughs> According to the United Nations, the same royal family have ruled Brunei since the 14th century for over 600 years, meaning the current sultan also represents one of the world's oldest continuously ruling dynasties. Actually, the country of Brunei did not gain independence from Britain until 1984. Ooh, I was Isn't too. Isn't that remarkable? Yeah, craziness. We couldn't see, you know, like that, we couldn't see his MTV crib. So, <laughs> you know, we got back on the road and continued to go through this just relentless rain. The problem really started when we got into the city proper. There was actually quite a bit of traffic. This is a very modern city. It didn't have as many roadside food stalls as I would have liked no. because we were pretty hungry and it was bucketing down rain. Yeah, but anytime there was like a red light, you know, I would obviously I'd stop at red lights. That's kind of my thing. But uh, then when the rain is just coming down. It's no longer like at this angle where I could block it. Marissa is now just getting absolutely soaked. And Marissa was getting mildly uncomfortable in the back and her stodgy bottom. Soggy bottom. Soggy bottom. <laughs> 
My bottom wasn't soggy, but the rest of me was soaked because I didn't wear my rain jacket that day. I didn't expect to be stopped in this traffic with water bucketing over me, but I should have expected that. I should have been prepared. Yeah. And it just happened out of nowhere. But I went from being cold and wet to being, <gasps> I couldn't even think anymore. I think within my helmet, I just started crying but couldn't tell because I was just so wet and cold and I couldn't handle anything anymore. And all I could say over the intercom was like, Tim, I need to get dry. We were in the downtown city, but like I was looking for like somewhere to eat and there was like Marissa we're said, there's somewhere no- somewhere to park. Yeah, it's, it's like- just nothing. Riding around downtown Chicago. Yeah. There's no parking. There's no like little stalls like we had been used to. You can't just ride up on the sidewalk like we want like, to. where are we? <laughs> you know? But there was the mall. There was. I'm like, oh my gosh, we have to go to the mall. And I had an underground garage parking and that was our last resort. I got chilled. So now I am completely wet and I'm gonna go inside this mall here. When you're freezing cold, the worst thing to do is to go into a mall because it's like just air conditioned bombs, you know, and it's like, <gasps> but yeah. yeah, Marissa's just shivering and trying to figure out how to, to get back warm. And Marissa needed to change out of her wet clothing though. Yeah, the real problem was that my clothing was at the very, very bottom of our one big back bag. So we would have had to take it down, take absolutely everything out and no. I was just like no it would have taken I, I, I can't five do that minutes. So we, were not, <laughs> we were not prepared for that amount of dedicated time so bad decision I really regret this but I had my rain jacket which was completely dry because I hadn't used it right and I just thought I'm gonna find a bathroom and I'm gonna take everything off and just wear my rain jacket with nothing underneath it here we are in one of the most conservative countries in all the world. <laughs> and Marissa's one thin fabric away from being in jail for the rest of her life. Because she's... But... No one could tell. No, she zipped all the way up. The last yep. 32. <laughs> My rain jacket on. It's nice. Warm. Feels great. And she had her hot soup and got warm. And I could see, you know, the blood yeah. coming back to her head. She was getting uh, happy again. Ooh, nice and warm, yes. <laughs> so that was all in the basement of the mall and we went up to the second floor and kind of crossed this courtyard that had this big beautiful water fountain and such and there was that mosque again. Oh, wow. The mosque is called the Omar Ali Seyfedin Mosque. It is built with 3.5 million pieces of glass mosaic which are overlaid in real gold leaf. There was also people at the mall who were clearly local Brunei people and they were wearing these beautiful outfits. Yeah. These textiles that were very intricate. After we were warmed up and dry once again, we got back on the motorcycle and re-entered into the constant rain. This time I had to put on my motorcycle jacket over my rain jacket because my motorcycle jacket was soaked yeah. and my rain jacket was the only thing protecting me. So it was a little awkward, but. Yeah. <laughs> but we got back on the road uh, and I kind of got us a little wrapped up and twisted. Um, we went the wrong way. We went the wrong way. And I like when she says we. Because <laughs> we both had one hand on each of the handlebars. <laughs> we uh, ride like this. We ride like this. <laughs> Next time, Tim takes a wrong turn and we end up on an insanely long bridge. And guess what? It keeps raining. Plus, Tim's phone, which we have to admit got a little wet, has a problem now. So we have some not so great news today. Um, because of the rains yesterday, 
now Tim's phone that he uses as a GPS is not charging anymore. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding, ding. And we'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe, everybody. And if Patreon is your thing, for as little as a dollar a month, you can sign up and support our adventures. And you also get some exclusive content of updates where we are. You can see some of our videos five days early or so, all ad free. And you can get a postcard from wherever we are at in the Yay. world. So check out our Patreon link in the description below. And we'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Peace. And oh, that's the mosque that used to be the highest structure in all of Brunei. And then like the Bank of Islam. Oh, the Islamic Bank of Brunei. Do you want me to say that again? Because it's like the Bank of Islam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we did see the big golden... Uh, topped uh, mosque and it used to be the tallest building in all of Brunei but the the bank of the Islamic <laughs> it used to be the tallest building in all of Brunei but the Islamic bank of Brunei Brunei <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. and it used to be the tallest structure in the entire country uh, but right next door, the Islamic Bank of Brunei actually built a larger <laughs> tower, a larger yeah. building. And uh, yeah, the Sultan was like, no, 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 no. The, the tallest building in our country <laughs> is not going to be the bank. It is going to be this mosque. And so they actually removed like two stories, which, you know, is a very conservative country. Yes. <laughs> you got there. <laughs> you did it. <laughs>